Good afternoon, everybody. Judy Maggio, and we are focusing on iconic Austin this month. And what's more iconic than Cisco's? Not much. Not much. I'm here with Matt Cisneros, who is the grandson of the infamous Rudy Cisneros, who ran and owned Cisco's for decades, right? Since 1950. Since 1950. So my favorite memories of this place are just coming in and observing all the people here. I mean, this was the place to hang out for politicians, for actors who were visiting yep. towns, for athletes. I mean, yep. you'd always see someone famous here. Right. What do you remember as a kid? Uh, exactly what you're saying. I mean, it's it's the people that you wanted to see but didn't essentially have to get overly excited because they're in a place of, of comfort. Um, just the excitement of seeing anyone from Coach Royal uh, growing up and going to the games and knowing you know his pictures are on the wall, but also seeing the history uh, in this building and then at the UT Stadium, it kind of all connects as one. So yeah. um, people like yourself when, uh, when I was younger and you were in here, so it's cool to see you again. Uh, yeah, same history that you know and, and most of Austin does. What I love about Cisco's too is that it's still here. I mean, a lot of the restaurants that we just said goodbye to the Nighthawk yep. and all those places, Threadgill's, one of their locations. Is, right. You and some partners have bought Cisco's and kind of given it new life. And as you tell me about that, we're going to go around and look at some of these pictures on the wall because I love the pictures. There's so many famous people. But anyway, so tell me about why you decided as the grandson to step in and and buy the place and kind of refurbish it and, 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 and make some changes. Sure. Um, well, being from Austin, it's obviously super close to my heart beyond it being kind of a local thing. My grandfather started it. and. Um, you know, it was something that I didn't want to see go away because it's it's super valuable to the history of the of the city and me personally. I, I grew up coming here all the time, um, but also with you know gentrification coming, it's cool to keep Staples alive because it, it allows people to actually feel like they're part of Austin even though they're they're new to it. Um, so just with between the history and and not making it a big condo project, I thought it was a cool thing to take on and. Um, you know, to see what we could do and make it even better than it's ever been. But it still has, not to not to have a pun here, but it still has the same flavor. Sure. I mean, when you walk back here, this is exactly how the room has looked forever. Yep. And I want to talk about the picture, so let's go over Definitely. here and look a little bit at these. Um, first of all, we're walking by, is this Julian Reed's table? It is. Julian Reed, who was, a pres who was uh, Governor Connolly's chief person and still comes in. Yep. He, uh, he does. Um, he'll have parties here or call ahead, make sure his table's uh, reserved for him. He's a great guy and he's been coming for years. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some of the famous people on the wall who obviously graced this place and came on a regular basis. Yep. LBJ. Great friend of my grandfather. Um, lots of old stories of, of he and my grandfather playing poker till all hours in the morning and, and taking Air Force One back to DC to go hang there. And really? That's, yeah, that's one of thousands that I barely can scratch the surface with. But yeah, lots of cool stories like that. LBJ. Um, okay, so we also have, I think that, yeah, we, we have the, the late now, yep. uh, George H.W. Bush. Did, uh, did he come in here? He and my grandfather um, were friends. I don't know how close, but I know that there were uh, campaigns held here. Um, to, uh, to kind of get the, the neighborhood in the know of George H. Bush when he was running for, um, for president. So how many political meetings do you think have taken place here? Is it hard? It's hard to guess, right? I think any number I'd say I'd be way under. Yeah. Too, too many to count. There are probably whole campaigns hatched here at one of these Absolutely. tables. Absolutely. I've just in, you know, the 15 months we've had it, I hear people come in and say, if I wanted something signed from the Capitol, Free cell phones, you would just go to Cisco's and know that somebody's going to be there to sign it. So, wow. ton, tons of political. I remember seeing Bob Bullock in here and yep. Ann Richards. Yep. Your grandfather must have known everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think he, he did a good job of playing the political side, but then also kind of the East Austin side as well. So, he was friends with everyone, and, um, you know, it didn't matter if you were West Austin, East Austin, North or South, he was, he was a friend of yours. You know, that's one of the things that I love about the fact that, that Cisco's is still here because so much of East Austin, the entire face of East Austin, has changed and so many of the mainstays have been pushed out. Yep. How do you think Cisco's has been able to remain? Um, a legacy that I did not build. Um, something I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to build off of, but I think when you're 
as outgoing as my grandfather was and you, you leave that legacy even that many years later, um, it, it would be an accomplishment to be, you know, a fraction as cool as he was. But, he was um, cool. you know, fortunately, myself, my partners are, are consider ourselves a little bit savvy, I guess, so we can come in and um, update, update Renovate. do the things that need to be done, but also, you know, restore and keep everything that made this place what it is and what it has been. Um, so yeah, we're we're not geniuses by by any means, but we're we're smart enough to know to not let it go. And he was he was so personable with everyone. You'd sit down at the table and he'd come up with a cigar, yep. your grandfather, and everybody knew him. And that that was part of being here was right. talking to him. Mm -hmm. So okay, we're gonna show you a few more photos here. I guess that's Willem Dafoe. Yep. Uh, Governor Clements. Kirk, uh, Kevin uh, Costner. Kevin Costner, thank you. He, uh, he, I know he made a movie here in like the 90s. That's probably about that time frame, but I'm not sure. Um, who else is on this wall? For those longtime Austinites, you might not know this, but Miss Kitty. Gunsmoke. Who, yeah, from Gunsmoke, mm -hmm. married an Austin City Council member. And she lived briefly before, her, before she died right. um, in Austin. Mm -hmm. So I guess she, Miss Kitty was in here, Amanda Blake. Um, let's see who else. Oh, Carol Keaton, <laughs> who is uh, still around and in Austin. Bob Bullock, he's yeah. somebody I used to see in here all the time. Yeah, he was, uh, he came a lot, and I think he had a lot of meetings here, and a lot of his staff came here, and um, very good guy that I, I met when I was younger. Uh, my aunt actually used to work for, for Bob Bullock. He was a Bullock. character. Yes. Now, he, he when in his younger years, he had a drinking problem, mm -hmm. but then sobered up. But I did read that um, this is a, this was no alcohol, right? Correct. It was. Uh, so how did that by, work? By definition, no alcohol, but no liquor license. Correct. So to kind of what we said about my grandfather, I could not pull this off, but because he was just so tied into the community, there was uh, a loose. You didn't have a TABC permit, but you were able to drink type deal, um, which we now formally have a TABC <laughs> permit. That's good for, to know. For those interested, um, yeah. So. He just had these really cool, loose loose lines he could walk because he was just so tied in. Yeah, so would people bring their booze in? So if you were in the know, he would immediately serve you the drink that he knew you wanted. Um, you kind of had to no have that. No questions asked. Correct. And, yeah. So I mean, okay. you, had, you had to be in the know. We were talking about Julian Reed and John Connolly. This is John Connolly walking with Julian Reed. And that looks like Preston Smith, the governor, and I think that's Ben Barnes back Correct. in the day. Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes, who's still around Austin. Does he come in? You know, I don't know that I've seen Ben Barnes. He might. Um, a lot of people that are established or are well-known, yeah. um, they kind of sneak in on, yeah, you yeah, know, like a Tuesday in. morning or something like that because yeah. weekends are a little hectic. And here's Daryl Royal and yep. Edith right there, late Daryl Royal. Okay, so... I want to talk about the menu. Has the menu changed much over the time since you guys bought it? And so, sorry. the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our photographers are walking backwards. The, uh, the menu has really only changed in the sense of um, kind of a new print, right? So we have, we have dinner as well. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, you're I'm good. smelling the biscuits. It's, it's a good thing to smell. Um, yeah, so... Migas. Staples, staples are still here. The migas, the huevos rancheros, um, everything we were kind of built on. The biscuits. Yeah. You don't usually associate biscuits with a Mexican food restaurant, but I love your biscuits. But that's the thing about Cisco's is that it's it's nothing, nothing fits. It all fits together, but it's not supposed to be there. Yeah. So it works. But now you're doing dinner we and are. lunch. So. So seven days a week, um, we are open until 10 p.m. And historically, 68 years, it was 7 a.m. to 2:30. And so we're now, you know, the, the changes that people uh, see are, are subtle in the sense of we're growing the business, but we're not changing the business. Yeah, so yeah. Um, nothing, honestly, that my grandfather wouldn't be proud of is kind of the way we look at things. So any step we take towards should we do this or not, it literally goes back to what would Rudy have done. Yeah. So we, we keep that as kind of the, the focal point of, of moving forward. So I have, to, I have to show one of my ties to Cisco's. Yep. Um, Back in the day, they got notables in the community to come in and, well, actually, we had to dress like clowns and people had to guess who we were. So I was right, that's me, I was right next to Rudy Cisneros, the grandfather, Cisco, and uh, so I recently came in and signed this. 
Lee Cook, John Kelso, Bob Cole, Donna Lafiano. So this was a long, long time ago. I, the only reason I remember when it was, it was 1991 because I was pregnant. Ah. And the clown paint made me kind of stick to the stomach. Okay, so who else still comes in? I see I see the Ben Crenshaw table yeah, in here. So I'm assuming that Ben still comes in, the golfer, famous yep, golfer. The Crenshaws are, are great, great friends of ours and spend a lot of time here. We're fortunate that they're, you know, really, really um, helpful and, and we're very pro us taking it over because we've known them for a long time and they just wanted to kind of stay as is. Yeah. Um, so they do a great job at being consistent coming in and um, if it's a Sunday and the Crenshaws are in town, they're here. What do you think your grandfather would view uh, about East Austin now? I mean, back in the day, right. this was not, you know, it was just kind of like, you know, it was here. Right. Cisco's was here, but there weren't a lot of other things around here. Now so, it's like condos and new restaurants and right. hipsters. and. So I, I kind of equate East Austin present day to like what Brooklyn is, because it, it's growing so much and there's a lot of the, the hip scene, breweries, et cetera. But for instance, Peter Luger is the staple in Brooklyn. Cisco's is a staple in East Austin. Yeah. So um, I think he would, he would welcome it with open arms, knowing that there's an opportunity. Um, and once again, anybody who's at the Capitol now would be a friend of his. So it was business as, as usual and just kind of keep rolling with the punches. I want to, I want to kind of walk up to the, to the other, but now anybody who's been to Cisco's long time off sites will know this is the back room yep. and this is where everybody would hang out and eat and right. have their meetings, but, but you come in a different way. So we're going to attempt to go back there because I want to show some of the remodeling that you've done Definitely. up front. Um, and you've really tried to kind of keep that, that same flavor. Yeah, you know, the aesthetics are what they are. We're not here to change anything from what it was meant to be the whole time, so. So, this is, is this the kitchen where everything is made? Yep, um, so biscuits are made in the back kitchen, but if you're ordering Miga's anything, eggs related or fajitas, et cetera, that's, that's, all, that's all made here, here in this kitchen, yes. That's why it smells so good, yep. okay. So, but you can still sit out here, mm -hmm. right, as well, okay. Is this the original tile? It is, so um, it's kind of always been the theme is these orange, blue, red, yellow, even dating back to the front of the building used to have it. Even in our additions, I mean, we matched the tile to make sure that it looked like it's always been there before. So my final question is, Leah, why do you think people still come here? I mean, you grew up here, as I said, and, and folks, folks are flocking here. Um, why do you think Austin's so special, and why do you think Cisco's has a has such a special place in sure. the collective um, memory of the city. I guess a couple of reasons, but one is you can't you can't recreate this. Like it's it is what it is, right? So it's hard to go anywhere else and say, 50 years ago, I know a president was sitting in that seat or a two-time Masters champion sits at that table. Um, and, and they're real relationships, right? It's not that somebody went by a, a hamburger place in, in LA. Like that's not what it is. It's these people had relationships with my grandfather and this restaurant. So the value in that, I think, is what really keeps people coming back is just look at the walls and it kind of speaks for itself. It's a lot of pride um, in history that goes into making something iconic, right? So um, you can have the absolute best place across the street that's brand new, but that says 2019 on it and this says 1950. So a lot of, a lot of uh, memories that can't really be recreated or redone. And if walls could talk. Absolutely. I, I don't know if I'd want to hear it all. <laughs> I don't know if I would either, but um, I sure appreciate the time Thank and the tour of the, of the newly refurbished, and, uh, but still the same essence of your grandfather and all the history-making people who have been through this place. It's, right. uh, I, I'm glad that it's been a survivor Thank in the you. new Austin. Appreciate it. And um, I'm going to now probably eat some biscuits. So uh, thanks so much for watching this afternoon, and we'll be going to some other iconic places tomorrow. We have the South Austin Museum of Pop Culture. Next week, I believe, we have Threadgill. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for caring about our city. We'll see you soon.